we come before the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, my dear friends, we celebrate the feast day of St. Clair of Assisi, and we pray in a most special way for the communities of uh, St. Clair all over the world, especially here in Quezon City. We pray for their intentions, and we would like also to pray for people who are affected by this COVID-19 virus, as well as people who are victims of human violence. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your mercy led St. Clair to a love of poverty, grant to her intercession that following Christ in poverty of spirit, we may merit to contemplate you one day in the heavenly kingdom. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, the headland of Pisgah, which faces Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead, and as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev, the circuit of the Jordan, with the lowlands at Jericho, city of palms, and as far as Zoar. The Lord then said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that I would give to their descendants. I have let you feast your eyes upon it, but you shall not cross over. So there in the land of Moab, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died as the Lord had said, and he was buried in the ravine opposite Beth Peor in the land of Moab. But to this day, no one knows the place of his burial. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were undeemed and his vigor unabated. For 30 days, the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab till they had completed the period of grief and mourning for Moses. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom, since Moses had laid his hands upon him. And so the children of Israel gave him their obedience, thus carrying out the Lord's command to Moses. Since then, no prophet has arisen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He had no equal in all the signs and wonders the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and against all his land and for the might and the terrifying power that Moses exhibited in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious phrase. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. 
Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Bless our God, you peoples, loudly sound his praise. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, Amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in their midst. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So good morning, everyone. Morning, Father. My dear friends, do we have a right relation with others? Right in a sense of healthy, constructive, and empowering way. Not in a disordered way of exploitation, submission, or dominance. My dear friends, having a right relation with others is the theme we can glean in our readings today. This right relation with others even extends to our dearly departed brothers and sisters. In the book of Deuteronomy, the Israelites conducted the proper rites of mourning for the death of Moses who led them out of slavery in Egypt, but was unable to join them to the promised land of Canaan. For 30 days, the Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab, where he died. This period of grief and mourning was their own expression of having the right relation with their departed patriarch. After a period of grief and mourning, Yahweh appointed Joshua, the attendant of Moses, to lead the tribes of Israel to the promised land. In the death of their leader, Yahweh provided them with a successor to continue and to complete the mission of Moses. Here, Yahweh assured them, that his promise to their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, would be carried out and completed. In the last verses, we read the tribute of Israel to Moses. No prophet has arisen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He had no equal in all the signs and wonders the Lord sent him 
to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and against all his land. For the might and the terrifying power that Moses exhibited in the sight of all Israel. My dear friends, this experience of the Israelites in dealing with the death of Moses provides us with some insights on how to deal rightly with our beloved dead in this time of the pandemic. We need to set aside a period of grief and mourning for the passing away of our dearly departed. This period is a sacred time to allow oneself to cry, to feel the loss, and to be consoled by the Spirit of the living God. Secondly, God empowers us not to be immobilized by the pain of death, but to be inspired by the good life of the dearly beloved ones, and to be animated by their virtues, holy desires, and mission. In this way, we become their legacies as we continue our earthly pilgrimage. Lastly, we honor their memories, lives, and their persons with our testimonies, charitable works on their behalf, and praise God for becoming part of their lives here on earth, and hope in God for them, that we'll be reunited with them in the fullness of love and life. My dear friends, this right relation is more relevant in our dealing with those who are alive. In our gospel today, Jesus encourages his disciples to deal with charity their erring brothers and sisters in various levels, personal, peer level, and communal. In the spirit of care and concern, Jesus invites his disciples to be courageous in giving feedback to a brother at fault in private. Perhaps Jesus emphasizes this first level to be personal and private so as not to humiliate one's brethren in public. Unlike the Pharisees who brought the woman caught in adultery in public to shamefully hold her in contempt. In the levels of peer and community, Jesus sees the need of the Christian community for fraternal correction. As Jesus stipulates, it is important to note that the feedback is based on establishing facts based on the testimony of two or three witnesses. It is not just an opinion or perception of one person, but factual and shared observations. For Jesus, this exercise should be done in prayer. For where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in their midst, in our midst. In our situation today, this fraternal correction is the key for the growth of the members and for the corporate body of the church. It is a way of cultivating the right relation with them. However, as Jesus stresses in our gospel today, the ones receiving the feedback needs to listen. The inability to listen will lead one to be defensive, dismissive, and even destructive. When we receive negative feedback, we need to listen with our hearts, for the feedback is given and done out of care, concern, and charity for us. St. Clair of Assisi has a good insight on the right relation with others, either dead or alive. This right relation needs to be grounded on the love that God has for us nourishing us with his love, shaping us into his love. She said, and I quote, We become what we love, and who we love shapes what we become. If we love things, we become a thing. If we love nothing, we become nothing. Imitation is not literal mimicking of Christ. 
Rather, it means becoming the image of the beloved. The image is closed through transformation. This means we are to become vessels of God's compassionate love for others. End of quote. My dear friends, in today's Mass, we pray that we indeed cultivate the right relation with others by our healthy ways of dealing with death and by our proactive ways of fraternal correction, grounded in a love that ever forms our hearts into the sacred heart of Jesus. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers to the Lord. Jesus tells us today, if two of you agree to ask something, it will be granted to you by my Father in heaven. So we pray together and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of the church may be drawn close together, living in peace and harmony. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may respect the rights of every person and avoid repression and atrocities, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may have the courage to speak the truth with love and accept criticisms graciously, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick, the aged, and the house-bound may see God's comfort and consolation in the compassion of those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may be cleansed and prepared for eternal unity with Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for those celebrating their birthdays today, for Arnold Rabena, Preslanda Senere Suarez, Ronald Magleo, Father Martin Likup of the Society of Jesus, Brother Melvin Palme of the Society of Jesus, Ricardo Abad, Delphine Soledo, Lorraine Panopio Almario, Alice Serna, Melvin Macrohon, Jeff C. Waga Zulito, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of Patricia Lee, Alejandro Navarro, Arden De Sena, Erlinda Lim, Marjorie Rarugal, and Raymond Isaac, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Andrew Hernandez, Ofelia Mirasol, Florinda Borromeo, Josefa Ramos de la Rama, Malu Grutas, Hector Serpes, Faustino Urbon, Jose Mirazol Jr., Jaime, Jaime San Juan, Delfin Soledo, and Ching Oi Sam. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of Neva and Denis Goquinco, Erlinda Cheers, Lourdes Buenaventura, the De La Cruz family, Grace D. and family, the Negrito family, Nina Malvar, Lisa Halandoni, St. Poor Claire Sisters, Quezon City Community, and baby Alonzo Gael Fernandez, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions you have sent to our Facebook pages here at Jescom and Radio Katipunan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, with your Son in our midst, we ask you to help us believe in the goodness of each person and be patient with one another as you have been good to us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness of this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness of this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good and the good of all his holy church. 
As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin Blessed Saint Clare, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries will be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them that the Jew fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, your respective local bishops, all their clergy, and the entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Clare, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed Saint Clare, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, O most illustrious patriarch, Saint Joseph, on the testimony of St. Teresa, thy devoted client, never has it been heard that anyone who invoked thy protection or sought thy mediation has not obtained relief. In this confidence, I come before thee, my loving protector, chaste spouse of Mary, foster father of the Savior of men, and dispenser of the treasures of his sacred heart. Despise not my earnest prayer, but graciously hear and obtain my petition.
let us pray. O God, who by thine ineffable providence didst vouchsafe to choose Saint Joseph to be the spouse of thy most holy mother, grant we beseech thee that he whom we venerate as our protector on earth may be our intercessor in heaven, who livest and reignest forever and ever. Amen. So thank you for joining us in our Mass today. Uh, we continue to pray for each other and be consolations to each other, especially in this time of the pandemic. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Sing it in the midweek.